Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Brie from With Love Brie, and today I have a project share for <laughs> Scrap Diva Designs. Um, I am a guest design team member for um, her shop, so I did do a tutorial on a card holder or like storage box. I will make sure to link that down below for you guys to check out. It is using this die right here. And it has a pretty lace border all around the top part of the box. Um, I think I have it. So this is the box right here. I did do a tutorial on how to put this together. It does fit both A7 and A4 size cards. A7 is 5 by 7 and A4 is just your standard 4 and a quarter by 5 and a half inch size. And yeah, so if you guys want to check that out. I will have that down below for you guys. Okay, so for this one, I am going to be sharing with you guys the like foodie type themed dies, if that makes any sense. So if you guys saw my haul video on my um, on the dies that she sent me to use, um, I received from her a charcuterie board, an apron die and this cooking set die. So these two were definitely a challenge for me because I don't really make any baking or like cooking themed projects. So like I said, it was a challenge, but it was really fun. I had to set aside this project for about maybe three weeks. Is it three weeks? Has it been that long? Two weeks maybe? I think two weeks. But um, yeah, I had it. this was the first one I, I worked with and I set it aside until today. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the different projects. I did use the Garden Party Collection um, because I am starting to work with it. And I thought these would go perfect for some kind of like baking or, you know, charcuterie tea themed stuff. So let me go ahead and show you guys what I came up with. Nothing special. I tried to do what I can. I tried to come up with something cute, but I couldn't really figure out what to do. So for the apron die, it does come with a stamp set. And for this one, I actually um, made some little tags for when I bake or um, I could give them to my mom so she can use them for when she bakes. And I thought I would embellish a couple with, um, you know, some stickers and some chipboard from the collection and then the other two I try to keep them kind of plain and simple just to give them a different look uh, just by using the stamps and some um, what are those called I have them right here the liquid pearls so what I did was I went ahead and I die cut this piece right here um, you can use these separately or you can use them together I use them together because I love that stitched look and I did love how it looked on top of this one so what I did was I went ahead and I die cut two out of pattern paper and two out of some solid colored cardstock um, I actually used the paper from the project pad because at least I knew the colors were going to match perfectly so that's what I did there and then these two right here are the pattern papers that I used um, to die cut. And then the tops for the plain color cardstock ones, I did the stamping on just cause it will show better. So this one right here, I kind of messed up. I stamped it pretty bad, like right here. So I had to re-stamp it and I didn't line it up very well, but I didn't want to throw it away cause you could still use it. You could still read it. Um, it says today's menu take it or leave it what I love about this one is it does come apart so this top part you can stamp in one color and then you could stamp this bottom one in a different color but I didn't really want to have two different ones on here I wanted to kind of keep it all in the pink family so I just left it as is um, and then I did add some like rhinestone heart stickers so this one right they're both from Dollar Tree actually I have not seen these in a while but I did use a yellow heart rhinestone and then this little puppy sticker and it's like a yellow gold and then I used some of the liquid pearls in platinum pearl and I just put three little dots in the corners and I had some of these mini heart um, like jewels and these are Park Lane you can get these from Joann's 
and I just use those on the ends of the apron and I don't know if you guys can see how they look they are so tiny and I love how they look on there so um, that's that one and then this one says baking is love made edible I love that one so much so I had to use it and I haven't heat embossed in a while so I went ahead and I heat embossed this one in some gold um, embossing powder and then I just added a pink gem um, like rhinestone sticker to this one right here did the same thing and added some of the pearl dots on the sides and this one had the black and white patterned paper in the back these two are the ones that I use patterned paper for so again I used the color cardstock from the project pad and what I did was I just layered the um, patterned paper piece on top I left it plain but I felt like I could use something from the collection so I just added this chipboard piece that says XOXOXO and I just thought that that looked perfect there um, I did use some rhinestones and these are from buttons galore and more um, these are actually from one of my newer hauls from them because I am a design team member for them and it is their strawberry crystals so if you guys want to check that out um, I'll leave that link down below too but yeah these are really pretty so this kind of gave me like watermelon strawberry kind of vibes with the green and I just thought it went perfect so I don't know if you guys can see I put uh, three different sizes here in the corners and then that one was that tag and then right here I actually used some of the stickers and I die cut a flower I had an extra one so I added it to the corner here I did scatter some sequins from the blush tin from buttons glow as well um, and then I added a yellow another yellow rhinestone sticker on top and then for this one, um, two of them I didn't add the little heart stickers, um, pearl stickers, and then two of them I did. So for this one I did add them again. So I don't know if you guys can see, it's right here on the ends. And then I did add another jewel. This is the transparent AB, um, one right here in the middle of the flower. And for this one, I did use the um, the purple pat or purple color cardstock for the background because I thought this floral piece of pattern paper would look perfect on top of the purple. So that's why I chose that specific color. And then the green right here, I felt like I needed to work with green a little bit more, so that's why I chose the green for this one. And luckily, I still had this XOXO chipboard piece because it just went perfectly um, with that one. Okay, so those are the four little tags. Um, apron tags that I created and I thought these would be really cute to you know put on a piece of pattern paper and gift them um, so maybe you just cut like a piece of pattern paper down to size and then um, gift four of these and I think they would make a great tag set especially for someone who bakes like that'd be really cute to have them all wrapped up So there are the tags, and again that's using this um, die and stamp set. Alright, and then the next one that I'm going to show you guys is the charcuterie board one. Like I said, I did have a little bit of a hard time with this one just because, you know, I don't really do projects with this um, or like food related, so I wasn't too happy with it at first. but. I guess it didn't come out too bad. I did do two different kinds of projects because I had other things in mind, but you know, of course that didn't go as planned. So, okay, so for this one right here, I made a note card. This is a very thick note card. I did use chipboard out of it. I did layer some cardstock on top and then also some patterned paper. Um, to make this one, her die actually comes with a layering piece and that one actually only layers on top of or underneath the largest size so all these other ones you can use um, they just won't have like a layering piece for them but what I did was for the bottom layer um, I went ahead and I die cut that twice out of pattern paper and I mean not pattern paper but cardstock and 
some chipboard. And then this second largest one right here with the hole in it, I went ahead and I die cut that out of the pattern paper. Um, I tried to go with some kind of pattern paper that looks kind of like a charcuterie board, so I went ahead and I did that with the wood grain paper, or like plain paper. Um, and then it does come with this little circle die, so you will have to die cut that circle separately. Um, yeah, so basically that's what I did there. Um, and then for the top part, I kind of wanted to make it look like, I guess, more so a dessert charcuterie board. I really wanted to use some of my dessert dies because I didn't, I never touch them. I have not touched them. It's my first time. So what I did was I made a couple macarons and I put those in the center right here. I did use more of the liquid pearls. I'm trying to use more of my Nouveau Drops and liquid pearls. So I added those to the top of the macarons. And then I also made some little donuts. And I made a couple with gold glitter paper and some of the pink pattern paper from the garden party set. And then I scattered on some butterflies, some little flowers, and I even made some 3D roses. These are a Lawn Fawn rose dye. Um, this vine right here, I die cut out of the green gold foil paper from the 6x8 paper pad, and I layered that in the corners. Um, and then for the honey, this is actually a clearance dye from Hobby Lobby. Actually, no, I think they still have it. But um, I got the honey from there, and also he is here in the room with me. Um, but yeah, so the honey stick, I actually die cut that of chipboard too. And then I layered a piece of pink cardstock that I die cut on top of it. And then for the honey, I actually die cut it out of pattern paper and white foam. I layered those two on top of each other. And then after I glued on the pieces to the charcuterie board, I actually took some like glossy accents and I stuck or put some on there to give the honey some of that like glazy look that glazy look to it, if that makes any sense. As you guys can see, it's shiny. So, and it looks so nice. I love how that turned out. I was scared it wasn't gonna turn out um, good or anything, but it actually turned out really cute. So that's how that turned out. And then for the donuts, I also added some of these little clay sprinkles. I do, um, I did get those from a sprinklets pack from Buttons Glore and More, which I called as well. And then for the sentiment, I just used a thank you, and that is from Pink Fresh Studio. It's a little thank you die. I didn't do the backing piece because it did have a shadow layer, but I, I only did the script part. Okay, so anyway, um, like I was saying, yeah, so there is the charcuterie board little note card. I did actually leave the back of it just the plain chipboard. You can cover that up with some cardstock as well. But I thought I would leave it just to give it more of that like, you know, boardy, like charcuterie board feel. Um, and then I was just gonna use like a little, you can use a white gel pen, white uh, chalk marker or um, paint pen to write on the back. So that's what I have there. And of course I couldn't leave a little note card, especially one that's like, dimensional because of the roses as you guys can see so I had to make a um, box card for this or box envelope for this one so I did do that let me show you guys so here's how it turned out I love how it turned out so easy to make um, I did use one of the pattern papers from the project pad and I don't know I feel I know the colors kind of don't match because this is more of a minty green there is some minty green in here but I don't know I just kind of felt like they went with each other to me I think that they're still pretty cute I kind of was like Ugh, I don't know I don't know and then I added this piece of pattern paper to kind of bring it in and I felt like it kind of it kind of did so this is what I did for the envelope box or box envelope um, and I went ahead and I die cut the same patterned paper with a charcuterie board except I use the um, third largest or third smallest it's the one right here in the middle um, this one right here I went ahead and I die cut that um, die cut that one out of the same patterned paper that I used on the note card 
And what I did was I used some of the cardstock stickers and chipboard to decorate this bottom corner to bring in some of that green and the gold foil paper. Um, I cut out another vine because I felt like I needed to bring that in. It just wasn't tying in with the card. So for me to be able to make this match and to make it go well with each other, I had to bring in some elements from the charcuterie note card. And so I brought in some of that green, uh, like that green vine die cut. Then some of these flowers, which I'm actually going to fill with some rhinestones, which I actually forgot to do. Um, and then I also did the same butterflies out of that same pattern paper um, with the little butterflies. So I don't know if you guys can see, but that's how they look. I love how this one turned out. I was a little afraid that it wasn't going to turn out great, but it, it turned out pretty good to me. So, sorry you guys, he's just like spazzing out here. Okay, so... um. Yeah, so that's how that turned out, and I just stuck it over here to the far left corner. I didn't want to cover up too much of this floral. There was a lot of blue going on there, so I thought, why not cover it up with um, another charcuterie board embellishment? And then um, I thought that I could just, whoever I gift this to, I can put their name right here, either die cut it or put some, like, thickers. So that's the plan for that. Um, for the inside, I actually made a little flap that you can actually tuck into here. And so it just tucks into there. Then you could put a piece of washi tape or something. But this just slides inside. I made a half inch gusset for it to fit. And it fits perfectly in there. And you could put like, you know, some shred in there or anything that you'd like inside. But yeah, it just fits perfectly in there. It doesn't squish it. There's a little bit of extra space as well. And, yeah, so that's that one closed up. And I love how this envelope turned out. I was a little worried, but it turned out pretty well. So, glad about that. So there is the box envelope and the charcuterie board note card. So if anybody has a little party, tea party, charcuterie board party, I love having those little kinds of things at like pool parties and stuff. These are the perfect thank yous um, to gift if you guys do that. So I do recommend this die. It's always nice to have just dies. You know, you never know when you're going to need it. So there is this second project. I did make another project as well. Um, so let me show you guys what I did there. Okay. So this is the project that I made. I was going to make this into a tag. So that way, you know, if I want to give some tags or um, a charcuterie board, um, like, like kind of like a kit. Is that a kit? Yeah, I guess like a set. I was thinking of doing like a basket, adding a board, putting some fruit, some uh, salami, cheeses and all that, putting it in a basket. You can use these as tags for your packaging. So you can put like to like who it's for and wh who it's from. Um, you can just use it as a decorative purpose for the little gift. Um, but I think that would be a cute gift to give. Um, you know, if you guys know someone who loves charcuterie boards. So that's what my plan was for this originally. However, I ended up doing a little easel like decorative piece. I don't know what made me want to do that. I think I was holding it up to like kind of look at it and I was like, you know what? I think this would be really cute if it was sitting up and if I have a little tea party, um, these can be perfect for name, like name plates or, um, you know, like little, yeah, like name plates or whatever. So I thought that was going to be, uh, I thought that would be a cute idea. So easy to make you guys literally just folded paper on the back. Just use sturdier paper so that way, you know, can you hear it? It just, it's super thick. So, um, yeah, that totally changed. I went from going from a tag to um, a little nameplate for your table or like table settings. So this is what I did. This is how it turned out. I used the black and white floral paper. I did add a little sentiment that says tea time and I did pop that up using foam. I just die cut the backing piece with foam and then I also die cut each word out of foam as well. So it's double like layered with foam. I know I said that a lot. I if I wasn't showing you guys, but um, 
yeah so here it is uh, like I was saying I do have some resin pieces here um, just like a little chocolate bar I have um, a macaron then I added some of the butterflies you guys know me and my butterflies so I had to add some in here I just thought that brought in more color this was this was another project that I kind of had to set aside like I said all these two right here I had to set aside because I just was so unsure of how these were going to turn out um, and then what I did was I scattered some sequins around and then I used um, oh I also used chipboard uh, chipboard for this one as well so I don't know if I said that already but they went flying um, but yeah so this one right here is actually a thicker chipboard this one I think it's more of a heavyweight chipboard I did struggle a little bit die cutting this and I don't think it's the die it might be the plate um, well I guess not the plate the one that I use is the magic mat so it's actually the scrapbook.com magic mat it might have been just that that didn't cut through um, so next time I'm probably gonna use my precision plate but yeah so this is a really thick piece but I just thought it'd be really cute to have on a table setting just sitting up there okay so yeah uh, my camera dies so much you guys it's ridiculous I need a new one um, okay so anyway yeah so that's how it turned out and then like I was saying before it died it's just this is a perfect I just think it's the cutest thing to have when you're having a little tea party or something to have um, everyone's name on one and have it sitting on their plate so that way that when they are done they can take this home with them and have it as a memory like a memorabilia piece and they can use it on their desk if they craft or if they have an office or anything they can set it on their desk and have it on there I just think it's the prettiest thing I love how it turned out for this I did use two pieces of 110 pound cardstock I did back them onto each other um, with some liquid glue and it just made it so sturdy so this would be also sorry I know I talk a lot but this also or like if you know if you want to label where each like kind of food is or what kind of food is there you can you know place these and have little um use these as little uh, menus I guess you can say you can say that like you know you have all your case here you can put macarons cake cookies or whatever and then place it there so that people know what's there you can use the larger one and make one you know or you can use these for indiv like individual items you could put cookies and then put it where the cookies are you can put um, ham and cheese sandwiches and then you can put it there or you can use a larger one and do the little menu thing like I was saying earlier and you can have like a list you could put dessert and you could put cookies cake cake pops macarons and then um, have that where that dessert is and then you can have like sandwiches and you can put the different kinds of sandwiches and then have it standing up like this and they play or like act as little menus so that you know whoever's there they could see it and know what it is so they don't have to ask you every time so you could do that as well but I just thought I would go ahead and turn it into that I just thought it was a cute idea so that is what I did there I could try to do a tutorial on how to do it, but it's pretty self-explanatory on how to, but it is really cute. So, definitely get this die, you guys. You won't regret it. I kind of want to show you guys how this looks, but I think I'm just going to have it standing up. Okay, so there's that one. So before the baby cries, last one is this one right here. So this one has all the cooking utensils. It has pots, it has pans. Um, you know some baking stuff like a rolling pin a whisk it also has um, the spatulas you know all that fork spoon knife um, so definitely get this if you guys love making cookbooks if you guys have your own and you want to you know further your like recipe book making it look more decorative then you guys can use this die um, what I did was let me show you. I think I'm going to give it to my mom. I'm pretty sure she would love what I made just because she does have a lot of recipes. But I made a recipe box. And this was actually accidental um, the way that I made it. I wanted it to be this way, but my measurements, I this is what I do with my projects. I don't sketch it out. I do it in my head and I do it as I'm cutting. I risk my, <laughs> I literally risk my, uh, craft supplies like that 
I probably shouldn't because that's a waste of product sometimes when you mess up, but it still worked out. I ended up having a top opening. I did have to redo the box twice and still messed up. So anyway, um, yeah, I went ahead and I made a recipe box and I'll show you guys what I did inside. But as you guys can see, I did use the apron die as well, but this time I actually only used this one right here with the lace. So I used that one only. And then I die cut, you know, the letters to spell out recipes out of mint colored cardstock. I did die cut a couple of the utensils. So I did a rolling pin. With the rolling pin, it doesn't have different like pieces. So you kind of have to die cut it out twice and then you have to paper piece it. So just when you want, um, so yes, yeah, so like I said, you have to paper piece it. Um, and so what I did was I die cut it out twice, one out of this gold polka dot embossed paper and then one out of 110 pound pink cardstock. So what I had to do was I just cut off the handles and then I went ahead and I glued the center part on top. You can do the opposite too. You can cut the handles off and put it on top of, you know, whatever piece you cut out. But I kind of like to have the center part glued on top of the handles. It saves you a... Uh, another step too because then that's two pieces you have to glue but this one you only have to glue one so it's up to you however you want to do it um but that's how i what i did there and then i die cut um the little like noodle ladle spoon thingy um, i'm pretty sure there's a name for it i don't know my utensils like that so that and then there's the whisk the whisk actually you can you know um add in different colors you know where the little holes are but the black part actually stayed in there so what I did was I just put tape behind it just to make sure it was gonna stay in place and um, I just left it there I thought it still it looked really nice still so I don't know if you guys can see it and then to decorate the apron I went ahead and I added some of these jewels to the um, to each of the little scallops and then I added another yellow heart rhinestone and I did stitch just the front. Um, so the front part, as you guys can see, is stitched with mint colored thread. And I did pop up all these letters right here with some foam. And I popped this one up um, as well. I actually used two pieces of foam for this because I already popped up this apron with one piece of foam. That looks... This is a one inch gusset, so for the card, it's a half inch, and then this is one. So, so that's what I use for this. I thought like one inch is a good size for a decent amount of recipes, depending, I guess, on what you, what kind of recipes you have in here. Because I know a lot of people have like binders full of recipes. My mom and my older sister have, um, you know, binders full. So. I, um, obviously this is for someone who just has certain recipes that they want to put in here. Um, and then on the back, I did actually use a different pattern paper for the, uh, lid. I just thought it would be really cute to have just one little sheet of floral paper. Um, so I did layer that onto the flap there. I did add some jewels to the edges. I don't know if you guys can see, but those are the white, I think, uh, oh no, these are diamond dots sorry these are just diamond dots but they're the AB diamond dots in the blue color and then I did add a grow green ribbon um, bow for the little flat piece here and then to close it up I also used some pink um, velcro so for that um, I just used Velcro. I was thinking about using magnets, but it was too late. I already glued this piece on, so I just felt like it was too late. I don't like when my magnets um, show through my project. So I ended up going with just some Velcro. Luckily, I have pink, and I thought it went well with the project. Um, and then on the inside, as you guys can see, there's the flap, and it opens up. I have little flaps here, and I have little recipe cards so I only have four in here but this can actually fit quite a bit and mind you I did also pop up some of the stuff there's still a lot of space it didn't even take up half the space I could probably fit more than a dozen in here 
Um, so I could just print out more and make some more of these. But let me just show you guys what I did. I don't know if you guys can see his little feet. <laughs> He's just kicking. Okay. Okay, so this is what I did with the cards. Um, I did use this die set right here to decorate the cards further. So... I chose pattern papers from the collection and I used all the papers that were in the project pad just so that way I wouldn't have to go through any of my other paper pads which I ended up going through but that was for other projects um, for some design team stuff so um, I thought black would really make all these bright colors pop and it really did I am so glad I chose to use black um, I do love how they look so let me go through each card really fast with you guys um, right here, I did, for each one, I did a two, sorry, I did two, like, um, handheld appliances or utensils. I don't know why I said appliances. Utensils. So I did um, a spatula and a whisk for this one and a rolling pin. And for this specific card, I'm going to do, like, some kind of baking recipe, right? So on the back, there is a recipe card. I just honestly found this on Google. I just put free digital recipe card printable and that's the one I came, uh, that's the one I saw. And so I printed it out because I didn't want anything too crazy. Um, so it has like the recipe, how much it serves, prep time, total time, ingredients, and directions. You do have to write pretty small for this, but it is, um, probably the most, you know, basic one out there. So that's that. Um, you can further this more, but like I said, it's a recipe card. It's going to get damaged eventually because you're going to be, you know, flipping through it while cooking. So there's that one. And then there's this one right here. The way that I did this one was I did a big pot because they have a large pot and a small pot. Here's a small one and the big one. And again, like I said, you don't get layering dies but what I did was I just die cut this one right here the main piece out of a pink like 110 pound cardstock then I die cut it out of black and pattern paper and I used black just for the separating piece for the lid and then I used the pattern paper for the actual lid and the, um, the base of the pot so that's how this one turned out and what I'm going to do for this one is going to be like my grandma's spaghetti recipe um, because we, you know, you would use a big pot for the spaghetti. You would use the little um, like spaghetti utensil. And I also use this too for the sauce sometimes. So um, I thought those would go well for a spaghetti recipe. And then this one right here would be a pan recipe. So, you know, um, like pot stickers or anything like that. I know it's pot stickers, but, you know, I cook mine in, pan, um, in pans. So I went ahead and I die cut a pan and a spatula. There's two different kinds. Is that a spatula? Yes. <laughs> so um, I went ahead and die cut those. I did it again with like the little X. This one I didn't do because then it would have been fully covered. So I just did it on the sides, but I love how that turned out. Um, so for this one, I'm going to do a pot sticker recipe. But like I said, I might give this away, but this was what was going through my head. I was thinking that, you know, you could do a pan recipe, a pot recipe, baking recipe, and then this is another baking recipe. So I just did another spatula and a whisk. And this is what the whisk looks like without the inner parts. And then this one says bake. This one, I used the handles from when I made this one right here. Oh, wait, no, this one. And I just glued it on top of this shiny pink paper. But I really love having the center part on top instead of having the two handles. It just looks better. Um, at least that's what I think. It's personal preference. But for both of these, I did glue the handles on top of the bottom part. And there's the recipe card. So all of them all have a recipe card on the back. You can um, print two recipe cards on an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. Glue those to some... Sorry, I glued those onto some black cardstock. And then I did glue a piece of pattern paper. Um, and then I also left a black border. And then I just decorated with these cute little dies. So you can do a bunch of things with this um die set 
but that's what I chose to do with this. I made a little recipe box, decorated the little recipe cards with the die, and I even included the little apron as well because I thought it would be really cute. So there is the box. You can go with a smaller box as well if you want to do a half inch or what, but I thought a one inch would be perfect. And those just go on in there. And then I have little flaps, goes in, flap over, and it closes like that. So that is it for this project share. I will have a couple more. I am working on more projects. They're just taking me longer than usual because I can never make just small projects. I always have to go crazy and make something big. I don't know why. Um, but anyway, so there they are. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing my cooking related projects using some of Scrap Diva Designs dies. I will make sure to have her shop link down below for you guys. That way you guys can check her out and grab your dies while they are still in stock. Um, hopefully by the time that I or get this uploaded, they will still be in stock. Um, definitely check out all her other dies though because they cut like butter. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. I hope you guys got inspired and I hope you guys also have a great day whatever day it is that y'all are watching this and I will talk to you guys in my next video. Bye!